making prospects interested, specifically when you sell enterprise software, it all starts with trying to communicate with the prospect to answer this question of what's in it for me. Because when you talk about the product and the features and the functionality, that doesn't really answer the question of what's in it for me. And I think this is where a lot of salespeople in general and often enterprise software salespeople can get hung up because we often talk about features and functionality because we have a lot of that knowledge in our head and it's often really cool stuff and we think that the prospect's going to be interested in it but it's really the benefits that the product delivers that answers the question of what's in it for me. So in order to focus on how to make prospects interested, especially in our short emails and our short conversations, let's focus on communicating what's in it for me by communicating the benefits that the enterprise software can deliver. So what we're gonna do is we wanna minimize how much we talk about the product that you sell and what the product does, and we wanna focus on the improvements that the product and feature creates. So I'm gonna go through a demo example here of how to really brainstorm and organize the benefits for enterprise software. And I'm gonna use a, a fictitious product here of inventory management software. I've never sold inventory management software. I don't have any knowledge in the space. I just sort of made this up. But I'm gonna go through this process to brainstorm benefits and what to say to sell inventory management software. And the process I go through to figure out what to say for inventory management software, you can copy that process and apply it to what you sell to figure out what to say for what you sell. So let's start with thinking about what is it that we're actually selling here. And I just made up three features here. These are three features of this inventory management software. So there's auto inventory replenishment and there's predictive demand forecastings and there's some sort of management dashboard. Of course, there's probably a lot of other features, but we're just gonna simplify this and focus on those three features. Now, when you communicate the benefits and how those features and that product helps, in most cases, most products and services, especially enterprise software helps in a few key ways. Usually software can help to make something work better. It can help to make something easier. It can help to decrease the time it takes to do something. It can increase income or revenue for that customer, that company. It can help that your customer that you're selling to, to decrease their costs or expenses. It can help to decrease risk. It can help to improve visibility or access to information. So these are very common ways that just about every product or service helps. And with that, you can often look at these areas to figure out how your product helps. But let me take you through a brainstorming process here to figure out how to communicate, to answer the question of what's in it for me when you sell enterprise software. So our goal here is to brainstorm about three to six value points. In our methodology, when we talk about benefits, we refer to those as value points. That this term is just interchangeable with benefits. So what we wanna do is we wanna come up with about three to six value points. And a starting place that we can do, this is one way that we can go about brainstorming is we can start with those features and functionality. And what we can do is we can look at each feature and say, well, how does that feature help our customer. And that helps us to answer the question of what's in it for me. How does having software that automatically orders, how does that help our customer? Well, that helps them to decrease the time they spend ordering. Well, if they can use our predictive demand forecasting, how does that help them? Well, that can help them to increase ordering accuracy because they're able to see in the future much better. So they're able to decrease times when they don't order enough and decrease times where they order too much. So it increases ordering accuracy. And the management dashboard, well, how does that help them? Well, the dashboard helps them to have visibility to real-time information. So that answers the question of what's in it for them. So we use this process of looking at features. I'll show you another way real quick is that another thing that you can do is you can just look at that common improvements list and say, well, do we make do we help to make something work better? We do. Well, we help to increase ordering accuracy. And you can just go down this list of common areas of improvements and say, well, does the enterprise software that I sell help to make something easier, help to decrease time? Yes, we decrease time spent ordering. Do we help to increase income, revenue, decrease cost, improve visibility? Yes, we improve visibility with our dashboard. We improve visibility to real-time information. So two ways to go about brainstorming benefits there. And you can 
apply either of those steps to what you sell to figure out how you can answer the question of what's in it for me for the prospects that you're interacting with. So now I want to take you to a more advanced way to think about your value points and how to answer what's in it for me for your prospects. This is advanced. You can skip this. But at the end of the day, your goal is to think about three to six different benefits, value points, right? But when you sell enterprise software, you can get much more sophisticated in this area by breaking down the benefits and the value points into three levels. Let me show you. Level one is technical value. And this is how your product or service helps to improve processes and systems and people make things work better. When you deliver technical improvements, that usually creates business improvements such as revenue and costs and improve the delivery of their services. And when you provide business value, that can often create personal value for the actual buyer or executive that you're selling to, and it can help them to improve their income and, and it hit their objectives and improve their career. So what you can do is you can break your benefits down into these three levels. And why this is helpful is that when you often sell software, you can often get hung up in the technical area. And even if you get sophisticated to where you don't just talk about the product, but you're talking about improvements, you can often talk about automating this and then streamlining that. And that's great. But what you can often forget is how does that impact the business? Because it's often the business improvements that can get projects funded and can close deals. When you communicate how you can decrease costs or increase revenue. That's really where you take your game to the next level. So dividing value into these three levels can help you to become more sophisticated and not forget to communicate that business value. And that can put you ahead of the competition. If your competitors out there just talking about technical value and you come in really presenting a case of business value of how you can increase revenue and decrease costs, that's how you can win business. And that can be a key with helping you to successfully sell enterprise software. Now let's actually go back to the subject of brainstorming benefits because the three benefits that we have so far are all technical benefits, technical value points. And I want to show you a process that you can use to brainstorm business benefits and business value points. And here's the trick is that if our goal is to think about business value points, we can start with those technical value points that we just came up with. And for each technical value point, there's often a business improvement that's created. For example, when we help to decrease the time spent ordering, that can help a business to decrease the people they have walking around processing orders every day. So that can help to decrease staffing and labor costs. Again, this is how you communicate in a much more sophisticated level. When we help to increase ordering accuracy, that can help to decrease inventory costs because we're not wasting money on over ordering or not running out with shortages and not purchasing enough. When we improve the visibility to information, we we help the executives that we're selling to to make better decisions and improve decision making. So these are business improvements. And if you can see that both of these sets of value points are important to talk about and to communicate, but it's these business improvements that can really help to take your deals to the next level. And if we want to continue to work through those levels and think about personal value points for your buyer that you're selling to, we can start with those business improvements and think about, well, when we help them to decrease costs, us, how does that help? When we help to decrease the time it takes to process orders and decrease those staffing and labor costs, how does that help? Well, if your buyer is the one maybe walking around reviewing and processing orders every night and you can automate that, you can help them to improve their work-life balance, help them to get home and have dinner with their family. If you decrease inventory costs, that helps the executive you're selling to to hit their objectives and their bonuses. If you improve decision-making, that can help your executive to get promoted and get more recognition. So now you're creating these really compelling reasons why in terms of what's in it for me for that actual buyer in terms of their personal life and what their personal gain is. And these are all very helpful things to talk about, whether that's in your email, your voicemail, your cold call when you're up in appointments. These are all very helpful things to talk about to make the prospect interested. What we've talked about so far is communicating the future of how we're going to improve things and make things better. We can also come at that from the other side of focusing on pain points, talking about what the prospect might be having challenges with by talking about what the prospect might be having challenges with 
or might be having concerns about. So this is about coming at it from the other side. One side is talking about how you're going to make things better and improvements. The other side is talking about how things aren't good and aren't working well. And that is focusing on pain. And in the same way that there are three levels of improvements that you can deliver, there are often three levels of pain that your prospect might be specifically when you sell enterprise software. So there might be technical pain where processes or systems or people aren't working well. And when there's technical pain, that can often work its way up to create business pain. So if there are manual processes, that means that cost might be higher, labor cost might be higher. And when there's business pain, there's often personal pain. So if things aren't working well, then your prospect might be worried about their job. They might not be hitting their bonuses. It might just be a stressful, unpleasant environment to work in. And so in the same way that we brainstormed value points, we can use a similar process for brainstorming pain points because it's one thing to know, okay, I sell enterprise software, so I should be looking for pain points and talking about pain points. But you can have that awareness, but not know what pain points to talk about or what pain points to look for. So this process that we're gonna show you here makes it very clear what pain points to be talking about with prospects. When you talk about these, this can help with our goal of trying to make prospects interested in the software that we sell. And so if our goal is to try to think about what technical pain points should we be looking for for our the software that we sell, well, here's a tip. You can start with looking at your technical value points. So remember, these are those three technical value points that we came up with. And what you can do is for each way that you make things work better, there's often a pain point that decreases or goes away or that is there that will be solved. So when you decrease the time spent order, a pain point that you might help to solve is that it's time consuming processing orders. When you improve ordering accuracy, a pain point might be that it's easy to make errors when ordering. When you improve visibility to real time information, a pain point is that it's difficult to get a real time view of orders and inventory. These are all basically the opposite. So you can look at the improvement and say, well, what's the opposite of that? And that can help you to create a good list of technical pain points. And we can continue with this process thinking about business pain points. And what we can do is we can start start with those technical pain points that we just came up with. And for each technical pain point, you can then say, well, how does that impact the business? So when it's time consuming submitting orders, that means that there's a lot of labor spent on placing orders and labor costs. When it's easy to make errors, then the business pain point is, is that ordering errors are costly and impact profitability. When it's difficult to view orders and inventory, the business pain point is as difficult to make decisions without visibility. So we use our technical pain to think about, okay, well, what are the business pain points that we can help to make go away or that we should be looking for? And you can take that process one step further to think about personal pain points. And for each business pain point, you can think about, well, how does that impact the buyer that I'm trying to sell to? Well, if there's a lot of labor spent on placing orders, Maybe if the buyer you're talking to, if the buyer you're talking to is the one spending a lot of time and working late on orders, then they're having to work late and submit and review orders every night, not able to spend time with their family. If errors are costly, then maybe the person you're selling to isn't able to consistently hit their bonuses because of errors in the orders and their costs. If it's difficult to make decisions, you know, we you could say, well, maybe they're not getting enough recognition or career advancement. So continuing to think about how do these business pain points or technical pain points impact the person that I'm trying to sell to. And this is just a step-by-step -step process that you can apply to your product or your software to think about these are pain points that I should be looking for. And I can be talking about in my emails, in my cold calls, in my voicemails, in my appointments, in my presentations to try to make the prospect interested in the software that I sell. Now, what we just went through there, we basically brainstormed a bunch of talk tracks and talking points, and you can put those together to create what we call building blocks in the full two to three day workshop, you'll hear us use the term building blocks a lot because what we help you to do is build your sales message into building blocks. And then you can use those building blocks in all different areas, whether it's your emails or cold calls or appointments or presentations. So what we just came up with is we came up with a value points building block of we help businesses to improve all of these different things. And we came up with a pain points building block, which is a lot of businesses that we work with are concerned about all of these different areas. And we help with all those different areas. So now you have those two building blocks to use in your messaging and use in your communications and to use to make prospects more interested in what you sell. 
And that will be much more helpful at communicating what's in it for me to your prospects instead of just talking about your product or software.